what was that break point for you at which you realized that you couldn't, you can't go on like this anymore? And what did you decide to do? So I remember the day that I was in my office and I, something just came over me like, I can't do this anymore. And then I decided, okay, this was a, like October 2005. And I thought, okay, by December, end of December, I am going to farm out all my clients. I'm going to just refer them to other people. I contacted the courts and I said, I resigned from my special master cases. Like I had great job security. I was in private practice, still am, but all these cases were referred to me. So I made a decision to give up the money, to give up the whole thing that I was doing as far as work, my whole identity as somebody who was one of the top people in our county doing custody work. And when I thought December, okay, I could do that. I could dismantle this. And then I had one couple come in for co-parenting. These people hardly wanted to sit in a room together with me. And after that session, I thought, no, 30 days, I'm out of here. And I moved it up. And I've never looked back. Is that because you were doing therapy and then you realized you really loved doing therapy and then you decided to switch at that point once you saw an out to your situation? No, I can tell you that what happened was I continued going to my continuing education for my license and to be in the custody arena in California. And you had to jump through all these hoops and so forth. And at one of the trainings, they brought in a brain expert. And this is what set me on the trajectory to the path that I'm on now, is that they showed scans of brains of kids who grow up in high conflict and domestic violence families. And that's when like the light bulb went on and I thought, there has got to be a better way to help these people than what I was doing. And I immersed myself in positive psychology. That wasn't taught when I went to school 30 years ago. And when I put all of that together and started doing things for me in that direction, it was a game changer. And then I, I started blogging, Brain Makeover. That book first started as a blog. And it came together so effortlessly I didn't know if I would like being an author or writing or anything. And I would, I had never been a public person at all. So this was like a huge leap into something new, but it was exciting and it made me feel more alive. Like I was contributing and people wanted more. And that felt really good that I could be me and not have the pressure of all of that stuff that went with the court work. So what I would love to now talk about is what information you learned and what you more or less researched and discovered on your own. And I would like to start by a statement that you make at the beginning of your book where you mention that anxiety orders are thought disorders. And I'm wondering what, what you can tell me what that actually means. Okay, so there's a lot of of what I know from firsthand experience working with people. Because remember, I've worked with people who have been high ang in high anxiety and fear, worry, stress, fight or flight, survival mode, call it what you want. That was my arena for probably 15 years. And when I came across positive psychology, I already was familiar with tapping. I knew Roger Callahan, who pioneered tapping. Originally, it was just for psychologists and mental health professionals. Um, thank goodness now it's mainstream. So if you're not familiar, you might look it up. But tapping calms the amygdala, the fight or flight response. And when we look for something other than 
what would be a past experience or a stressful experience. And this is a shift in mindset. It's a shift in the brain. I discovered that I could actually help someone rewire their brain, not just for positivity to be happy and cheerful. That's not it at all. But people who are happier, they're healthier, they earn more money, their relationships are better. And there's a good reason for that. Biologically, it does something different to your brain and all the the chemistry that goes on in your body. For example, when we're in high stress, fight or flight, anxiety, we have chemicals that are going on in our body that prepare us to fight or flee or freeze. It's all self-protection. And these stress hormones, particularly, are the ones that they will go to your arms, hands, legs, and feet first. So they're preparing you to run. Well, guess where your blood's not flowing? To your brain, to your digestion, right? Your stomach doesn't get it. So the digestion, the immune system, everything gets compromised when you're in high stress. And I have seen more and more people in high chronic stress today than ever before. So the flip side is when we can have thoughts and feelings. And if you take thoughts, feelings lead to actions, and they are all aligned. They're congruent. So you have a happy thought. You have a feeling of contentment or peacefulness, calmness, and you expect a positive outcome. Now, when you go to do a task or you are just going about your day, things flow better. You're open opportunities. You can become more aware of whatever it is that you need, information, connecting with people. It's a game changer.